There is a lot of crazy color science going on here, actually. What if I told you Monica's violet and green iridescent lip gloss appeared whitish over a purple base because the color is mixing additively? This is quite a color theory rabbit hole, so let's dive in. I have here red, green, and blue interference paints. I'm going to overlay them on some black cardstock to show you how they mix. In additive mixing, which we usually associate with lights, not with paints, red and green mix to yellow, red and blue mix to magenta, green and blue mix to cyan, and all three mix to white. But you're not supposed to be able to mix white in paint, so how is this working? How is this possible? These are interference paints, which means their mechanism of coloration works a little differently from regular paint pigments. In this paint are tiny flakes of mica. When light hits a flake, it can either bounce off the first layer, pass through and bounce off the second layer, pass all the way through and bounce off whatever's underneath, or pass all the way through and get absorbed by whatever's underneath. The crazy one is this one, because when it bounces off the second surface, the light wave gets like inverted, so what if the thickness of the flake is the same width as a wavelength of light, say one we perceive as green? Then the regularly reflected green rays and the inverted green rays are going to cancel each other out, and we won't see any green. So, depending on the thickness of the flake, the colors that it reflects or cancels will vary. But these flakes aren't actually absorbing any of that light like a pigment would. So when you overlay two different color interference pigments, their reflected colors can mix additively. It's about to get even crazier. So Monica theorized that there are two different glitters in the lip gloss to explain why sometimes it shimmers green and sometimes it shimmers violet. But in fact, one single type of mica flake paint can look either purple or green depending on the angle you're looking at it from. Why? Well, what if your mica flake is a little rectangle or rhombus? This way, its thickness could cancel out one wavelength, and this way, its thickness could cancel out different wavelengths. So, in the case of this paint, that's exactly what's happening. You look at it from over here, you see green, and if you look at it from over there, you see purple. Let's try out this paint on white paper, on black paper, and on purple paper. A shade of purple similar to Monica's purple lipstick to see if we get the same silvery effect that she did. So we don't see too much of anything going on on the white paper. Why is that? The paper is reflecting almost all the light through the mica flakes so their color is getting lost in the mix. On the black paper, we get the most vivid purple, since the mica flakes are reflecting more long and short wavelengths than the black paper, which is reflecting very little. It's absorbing all those wavelengths. But when we turn the paper this way, we get that secondary green color because of the special shape of those mica flakes and us catching it from that other angle. Okay, on the purple paper, at the right angle, we are getting a silvery sheen. Why? Now, we've got additive mixing. We've got additive mixing of two complementary colors, purple and green. And you know what happens when you add two complementary colors. You get white, or at least a lighter, neutral color. 